So you're making an FPS in Godot and things are going great. Maybe you even followed one of my tutorials on it, but then you see this and it's disgusting. Guns aren't supposed to do that, right? Yeah, definitely not. But more importantly, how do you fix it? Well, I have two really great ways that you can address this in Godot 4, which I'll show you over the next two weeks. Projects in the description, let's get started. Today, we're going to be looking at creating a sub viewport to draw the weapon on a separate layer, which will allow the weapon to be completely separate from the game and will never clip through objects. So this is the standalone project. We're gonna continue on from the FPS tutorials that I've been working on. You can bring your own project. I'm not really gonna to touch on any of that stuff in this tutorial, but I'm gonna be using it. I'm gonna make it available for download uh, in the description as well. I'll have both the um, starting point, which would just be the player controller, and then I'll have two uh, folders with the sub viewport and the viewport shader in them so that you can uh, see the finished product if you're having trouble with any of the code. Okay, so here we are. I'm just gonna run this. We're gonna start with the sub viewport, but this doesn't have anything on it. So when we run, uh, we can see our weapons just pass straight through and nothing can be done. All right, so how do you go about fixing something like this? Well, conventionally, there's probably about three different methods that I can think of. So this, the easiest and most obvious way I think most people go for is a sub viewport. At least that's the term in Godot where you draw the weapons or the view model or the rig on a separate layer to the game layer. And that'll allow you to make sure that it's rendered over everything else, which is probably the best way to go about it. So the first thing we're gonna do is just open up this uh, sub viewport. Yours might just say player character, that's fine too. So it's a really basic setup. We've just got the camera system here, uh, a pickup detection module and the actual collision shape. So we have got a canvas layer and this has a bunch of things. So I've got into 2D. We've got, you know, the uh, HUD overlay. Um, we've got the debug stuff. So this just shows us information about the current weapon because we don't have a UI at the moment. We've got our hit site and our main site, which is just the dot in the middle. Okay, so when we hit something, we flash that. So that's all that's going on here. We can just ignore all that um, and we can start adding nodes. So the first one we want to add is a viewport container. So you can just type view and you'll start to see sub viewport container. And so we can add that with we'll double click. And you want to make sure you click these anchors. The anchor preset that you want to select is this one here in the bottom right. It's for full rect. And having those anchors as full rect is going to make it so that no matter where your screen is, no matter what size you change your screen to, uh, that the sub viewport will follow it. Now, this is really important because if you don't set this up properly and you start changing the resolution, like I've got in some other tutorials, uh, your, your viewport is not going to follow if you're using this method. And the next thing we want to do is make sure that stretch is checked. That will make sure that the viewport that we put inside the sub viewport container will always have the correct resolution. It's gonna match the main viewport. So that's really important. Um, and then we're gonna come back up to this plus and we're gonna add a sub viewport, okay? Um, we don't really need to do much here. Um, we'll come down, everything is fine. Canvas color mark, we can basically ignore all that stuff. Um, obviously, if you're going to be setting this up in a full production, you probably wanna link up some of the visual settings to your main settings, but we're not gonna be covering that. We're just gonna show you how to set it up. So we'll come down to the positional shadow atlas. And the other thing we're gonna change is the size. So that's set as 2048. We're gonna set that to 4096, just so this is the same as the rest of the project, which is all default anyway. So atlas size 4096, 44, 1664. It's not important that they match, but I'm just gonna make them the same. There's not really any reason for it. It's just what I like to do. Okay, so now that we've got the sub viewport, pretty much all we need to do to, to that is add a camera. It's not, there's really not a lot of code, honestly. So we're going to add a camera. I'm going to rename it to um, sub viewport camera. And I'm going to make sure that's accessible as a unique name so that we can move it around because maybe you don't want it in a canvas layer. Maybe you don't want to, you know, have anything. Maybe you want to have it floating. I don't know. You change your project. Um, also, before I forget, obviously you're seeing this, which doesn't look quite right. 
we do need to come into the uh, sub viewport and change it so it has a transparent background that will allow us to see the world. That's really important. So that's, that's a big one. Don't forget that like I just did. I feel like every time I add one of these, I forget, and then I have to come back and change the setting. But yeah, transparent background under sub viewport, viewport, transparent BG. Okay. So now we've got that. We're halfway there. Then we're going to talk about coal masks. So just like every object has, every collision object has collision layers, cameras have coal masks. And so if something is not on the coal mask, then it won't be drawn. So for the sub viewport camera, we want to turn everything off because we only want to draw one thing. And I always like to make mine number 20 so that it's at the exact opposite end of everything else. Helps me remember. You can rename these if you come up to the project settings. Uh, if I can find it, camera, no, do, 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 layer names, 3D render. So you can um, rename this to view model. And now that would be called view model. And you could um, come back to the project settings and you could rename layer one world so that you remember. And then anything else you need to use in between because you know, you're know you gonna use these color masks for all sorts of stuff. If you're doing stuff in your game, depends what you do. Right, so we can name that view model and that's pretty much it. And we can come down to the main camera and we want to uncheck the view model so that the main camera doesn't draw the view model okay and then we just need to alter the meshes so that they are drawn on layer 20 okay so we're going to come to these um, models now these are all within scenes um, just because of the nature of this project I'm actually just going to make these local you might need to do something else to change these um, and that's okay but wherever your mesh is saved whatever scene it's in find it and just change its layer to be on the view model layer, whatever you set that to. Okay, set that there. And now, aside from setting the location, things should start to look a little bit better. You won't have seen anything because obviously the camera is at zero, zero, but even if you put it at the same height as the other camera, it still won't work because when something is in a sub viewport, it's basically like being in a completely different 3D world. And so what you need to do, you need to set your main camera's transform and your sub viewport camera's transform to be the same. And so we'll come to our script here. Uh, we're gonna need to get access. We've already got access to the camera here, but if you don't have access to your camera, which would be strange if you were making an FPS and trying to do this, but um, get access to your camera. Mine's just called camera, it's all the way, where is it? It's there. Um, and obviously I need to get access to the sub viewport camera as well. So a really quick way to do this is just to click and drag, hold control and then let go. It'll give you the sub port view camera. I like the whole get node thing. So I'm going to do that. Put that in some speech bubbles and go like that. Okay. I don't know why I just find it more readable. Okay, so now that we have access to it, we can set the transform the same. We've got a physics process here and you could do it in that, but it's not going to look quite right. Um, it does need to be done in the regular process function. So we're going to need to make one here, func underscore process. It should just automatically fill in for us here. Um, I'll make the delta underscore because we're not going to use it uh, for now at least. So we'll just go sub viewport camera dot set global transform and then we'll go camera dot get global transform and that should be all we need let's see if that's right and look at that we can see the gun and if we walk into a wall we can still see it if you come to the world, just to add a couple of things to set up for this and you want your directional lights and your world environment to work, world environment will automatically work. It just comes through. It's really great like that. So for the directional 3D lights, you need to make sure that they're 
on the same cull mask. This is the exact same menu. So if you hover over that, you'll see view model. So if you didn't want your directional light to affect it, you could turn that off and then just press play there. And then you'll see it's uh, darkened. So all of this stuff is just controlled by these cull mask settings when you're dealing with lighting. The world environment will come through automatically. There's a couple of things that you can't include like depth of field blur. Um, I'll just do near because far wouldn't make sense in an FPS. Um, you'll notice that you can no longer see the weapon. So that I'm pretty sure both of them don't work. Yeah. So there are limitations. Um, I, I don't know about auto exposure. I'm pretty sure that's okay to use. Yeah. So auto exposure is all right. So yeah, camera attributes, um, depth of field is not functional at the moment. Um, there might be a couple of things in the environment setting, but if you find them, just start resetting settings. But um, so yeah, just keep an eye out. If it's not working, it could be for your world environment. If you're having trouble, maybe try just using like a default world environment. And if you can see the weapons, then that's maybe why. You could have an individual field of view, which is really powerful. So field of view is not normally the same on a player model than it is in the world. So the default field of view, I think is set to 75. And this one here, it's also set to 75, but maybe we can set that to 40 or something like that. Um, it's, it's hard to test because um, at least last time I checked, this stuff doesn't actually show up in the 3D view field, field of view. Oh, it does. So that's kind of like what it would look like where you can sort of see it less. And you can play around with that, like how much you want it to come through. And uh, we can create a script so that we can slide that so we can come up into the canvas layer and we can make a um let's just jump into 2d here oh look we can see it now um we can add to the debug a um a slider so let's add a slider here um this is a range h slider this is we can add an h slider here um and right now we won't worry about like reading everything off. We'll make the tick on borders. Uh, it's going to be like 45. The max value, yeah, 100. Maybe that's okay. Min value, uh, 20. And the step is one. Yeah, that's all right. Um, and the current value. I just realized to count. Um, this is what I was trying to edit there, not that. So, so we can make that value 45. And then what we can do is we can come up to our canvas layer script and create a signal for this H slider here. And we'll make the signal value changed. And sorry, I meant to connect that to the player script, not the canvas layer. So then we can actually uh, manipulate the camera much easier. So we'll connect that signal to the player and we'll just call sub viewport camera dot set FOV and we'll pass in that value. Now this is just be a simple one. Um, You'll need to set up your project so that you can obviously use your mouse because obviously the mouse isn't working, but I can press escape and I can't actually click that. Do, do, do. Make sure uh, if you're working on UIs, sometimes your mouse won't work. Um, this is filter ignore so that what it will do, it will not receive it. The control will also not receive mouse entered and mouse exited signals. Um, this will not block other controls from receiving. So check your hit site. Mouse is also set to ignore sub sub viewport camera, which we just set up probably isn't. So it's set to pass. We probably want to change that to ignore. And now we can access the mouse. So now you can change the FOV, which is another really powerful feature of having something like this. Okay. So now that we've added our sub viewport, we can see that our gun no longer clips through the walls. But there's an issue with 
um, having a sub viewport in Godot right now, especially in Godot 4, it actually works totally fine in Godot 3.5, is that the direct light, the shadows from those, don't render onto our weapon. And you can see shadows are set up. We showed that in the project and it does render on the gun. You can see that it gets darker when it's facing away and it gets brighter when it's facing towards it. But the shadow from this object here does not get rendered onto the weapon. And as far as I can tell, there isn't a way for that to happen right now. And I'm not quite sure what the problem is. Last time I checked that there was a issue in GitHub for it. I haven't checked in a long time to see if there's any progress on that, but um, it doesn't work. The best alternative that I can think of to viewport clipping without having this lighting issue is using a shader, which we're going to be looking at next week. So definitely like and subscribe to make sure that you don't miss that when it comes out. As always, if you want to support this channel, you can always jump over to the Patreon where that video has already been live for almost a week now. And as an added bonus, you'll also get your name on this screen right now. That's all for this one, guys. I'm Isaac from Chef Games, and I'll see you next week.